welcome and welcome to this additional video introducing HFSS in the student version of the ANSYS Electronics Desktop or AEDT for short. And in our previous video, we had analyzed a simple dielectric filled rectangular waveguide. We were using explicit dimensions for the cavity. In this video, we're going to now explore the characteristics of a stacked waveguide and using the optometric feature of AEDT. And what we'll do is we will define variables for the dimensions of the cavity, as well as for the material properties of the inner dielectric. So as the name denotes stacked waveguides, that infers that more than one dielectric material fills the inside cavity of the waveguide. So let's get started. And let's see how we do this inside of HFSS. So here is the interface of the tool and it has an empty HFSS design. And we're going to use the default units, which happens to be millimeters. Let's go ahead and draw a box in the 3D modeler window. And we'll use width, height, and length as the model variables for the dimensions of the cavity. And in the history tree, let's double click on the create box and edit its dimension. Enter length in the cell that's next to the X size and click enter. A new dialog box appears and asks to define what is X size and to add a variable to the model object. Give the dimension value as shown and note the columns. There's unit type, units, and type for this new variable. And local variables are only available within the HFSS design for which they're defined. So now go ahead, click OK to accept the variable. Enter width in the cell next to Y size and click enter. Give the dimension value as shown. Click OK to accept this variable. Enter in height in the cell next to the Z size and click enter. Give the dimension value as shown and click OK to accept this variable. Click OK to accept all three variables that defines the cavity and to close the dialog box. For a quick check, you can view variables you just created and edit them. You can do this by clicking on the HFS design in the project manager window and you can view the properties box and you should see the list of variables. And now we define it, edit the variables while we created the model geometry. But you can also define the variables before you start creating geometry. And to do this, initially creating the variables, go to the project manager window and right mouse click on the HFSS design select design properties and now displays all the variables created so far go ahead click on add to add a variable and to use when you need it and this is yet another way to create and view model variables so variables can also be used for the material properties and since materials are common to all models within a project this can be achieved by using project variables so let's now add a project variable for the relative permittivity property of some material. So in the project manager window, right mouse click on the project and select project variables. And in that pop-up box, click add and enter the name as EPS underscore R1 and use the values as shown below. Click on OK to accept the changes. Now you note it that there's a dollar sign symbol that's appended to the prefix of the name of a project variable. And this is the indicator for you that this variable is a project variable and used throughout all the models that's in a design. So let's add one more project variable, EPS underscore R2, and use this value as shown below. Now close the project variables window, and in that modeler tree window, double click on box one, enter the name as WG underscore cavity one and click the cell next to the material and select and edit and browse to some dielectric, say FR4. And we can select FR4 underscore epoxy. Now we can use this dielectric material to create a new custom material set. Click on clone material and this creates a custom material with the FR4 epoxy defaults. And in the pop-up window under the name input, put my underscore FR4 underscore one. Enter the relative primitivity with the project variable dollar EPS underscore R1. Click OK to accept your newly created custom material for the dielectric for this waveguide cavity. Go ahead, edit the material transparency 
make it lighter so you can see the fields that are plotted. Now duplicate this rectangular cavity to create a stack. And you do this by right mouse clicking and select edit, then duplicate along the line and click on that X-Min face center and then on the X face max center to duplicate the cavity. You can hold down the X key to make sure you're only moving in the X direction. Notice the command item duplicate online is created under the waveguide underscore cavity one. Now the duplicate command automatically creates a new object with the same name of the duplicated object with an appended underscore one. So now our new object is waveguide underscore cavity one underscore one. Let's rename it to waveguide underscore cavity two and sign in another custom material with the permittivity set to dollar sign EPS underscore R2. Again, change the color so you can easily identify the two different dielectrics in the waveguide. Assign the wave port excitations along the X axis. Add a solution setup as shown along with a frequency suite. Now let's also add a parametric suite for the materials. And in the project manager window, right mouse click on the optometrics category and select add and then parametric. And in that pop-up dialog box, click on add. One more window pops up and in that drop down text box that's named variable, you'll see all of the design variables that have been created. Select dollar sign EPS underscore R1 and do a linear sweep. Enter the value for start, a stop, and the step size as shown below. And click on add in the middle of that dialog box to accept this parametric sweep. And now the sweep appears also on the right side column. And you can define additional parametric sweeps, but let's only use one for this video. Click OK to close this box and to continue. And now go to that table tab and this will allow you to view the specific values in the sweep you just created. And this comes in handy when you have to find several different parametric sweeps, as well as if you use a couple of variables. Go to the options tab and click to save the fields and the mesh. And this is so that you can plot the fields for all of the variations in that parameter. Now we're all set to simulate. Check that valid, big green validate checkbox. Go ahead and analyze. And once the simulation is done, we can view the results. Here is the phase constant plot for port one with the markers denoting the cutoff frequencies, cutoff frequencies of the different modes in that waveguide. You can also view these plots for all the values in that parametric sweep for EPS underscore R1. And in the report window of that rectangular plot of phase constant for port one, click on the families tab and make sure you select all the values of EPS underscore R1. Click on new report, see the variation of that cutoff frequency for each of the modes as well. Let's also view the electric field plot in the center planes of that waveguide. Now our global coordinate system is not centered. So let's go ahead and create a new local coordinate system. And that'll help us create centered plots. And in that draw tab, Click on offset origin and select the center of that common face between the two waveguide dielectrics. And then you can view this newly created coordinate system in the model tree with the name relative CS1. And you can readily edit that name and call it new underscore CS for coordinate system. Expand planes and select both the XZ and the YZ planes of that new coordinate system. Right mouse click to plot the magnitude of the electric field. And so notice the decrease in the magnitude of the electric field in the waveguide cavity as it goes from a lower value to a higher value of the relative permittivity. And it's really nice to see this concept. The higher the material permittivity, the greater the resistance or the impedance of that material to the field. So thank you for watching this video that shows you how to create and analyze that rectangular stacked waveguide using a model and project variables. So to find out more information on how to use HFSS or any of the ANSYS simulation tools, go ahead, visit ansys.com forward slash courses today.